everybody, it's Mary Z back once again. Today's vocalist that we're going to take a look at is Kyo from the Japanese band Dur and Grey. And they are sort of generally classified as a metal band, but definitely a more avant-garde, a progressive sort of act in which we hear an extreme variety of vocals. The folks at The Range Place have done a lot of work that really helped me with my research for this video. If you haven't checked out The Range Place, it's sort of a forum where vocalists input references for people's highest and lowest recorded notes, and sometimes they'll input notes for their entire range based on actual performances or actual recordings that exist. So it's really neat when I'm doing my research. Kyo is really a 10 here, but what, what everybody wants me to talk about are his crazy screams and his crazy high whistle notes. And what's interesting is, you know, men can have sung high whistle notes if they're a tenor or, or a counter tenor. The range place, they give him A1 to E6. This is his actual sung range. And then what's really interesting is they have questionable notes listed in the seventh octave. And these, I think, are not sung pitches. I think they're actually some of his whistle fry tones. But what's the difference? I'm not just going to make faces at the video. I'm going to go through and explain what's making the whistle tones. And we're, then we're going to listen to actual people singing similar whistle pitches and compare them to the whistle fry so you can actually learn to hear the difference. So here we go. This is Kyo from Dur and Grey. I don't know what song this is, but somebody named... Zui A. Not made a video that had a compilation of a lot of his live vocals, which again was very helpful for me. So I'm going to stop there, and there's a couple things I already want to point out about what we're hearing here. He's doing sung-voiced high pitches, sometimes falsetto notes that are actually sung. And by actual sung pitches, I'm going to get into starting to explain the difference between sung whistle tones and whistle tones that come out when we're fry screaming. So when someone is singing an actual high pitch, whether it's their falsetto or whether they're a coloratura soprano, their vocal folds are undulating at the speed of that pitch. They're also set to the certain length of that pitch so that they can hit that frequency. When somebody is actually making a whistle note that is in the middle of their fry scream, or this is perhaps why the range place lists some of the seventh octave notes as questionable, because they're not actually typically being sung. They are coming out of that person's mouth. So how can you have a note come out of your mouth that you're not actually singing? Well, by that, I mean that the vocal folds aren't actually going like this. They are sitting closed for fry scream. First of all, we only hear these crazy extended seventh octave pitches when he's doing fry screaming. I'm actually not sure if any of those pitches did go up into the seventh octave. I would actually have to check, but they're certainly really high. Definitely probably at the, the top of the sixth. That's typically not physically possible for most women or even a man to sing. I know I'm, you guys are going to go actually in the comments there and troll me with some people who can sing some of those notes. And it is true. There are always exceptions, but almost never is it physical, physically possible for people to sing notes at the top of the sixth octave or into the seventh octave. When someone's fry screaming, if you go back and you watch my most recent video on the different definitions of distorted vocals, fry screaming, we typically are phonating with our vocal folds shut like this 
pushing air between them to create some white noise. But sometimes people whose vocal folds are not too wide or too thick, like a tenor, like a person like this, they can actually hold most of the vocal fold shut and then open a part of it. They don't realize that they're doing this, but it only happens during fry screaming because actual phonation of a note would conflict with that movement. But when they're pressed and then a part kind of opens up when they hit a certain breath pressure, then they're creating a tiny hole there between the vocal folds and they're actually whistling between their vocal folds. What? That is pretty much what's going on in those extreme whistle tones. So when we hear people like Danny Filth, Maria Brink, Heidi from Butcher Babies, you know, get these whistle tones in their fry. They've, they've got really strong compression and they have good breath pressure regulation and they were able to find a spot where they could get the chords to kind of part. To the singer, you don't know that's happening. You just find a spot in your fry scream where you feel the whistle tone kicking in. Just be aware though, not everybody can do whistle fries. Like I can fry scream very well, but actually because my vocal folds are so wide from being a contralto, I really have never been able to get them to separate at all to do a whistle fry. Let's go back and listen to a little bit of that again so you can hear that. And and some of his lows are false chord with the vocal folds open, and some of them are the low pig squeal, low fry, guttural type things where our folds are shut. So it's really unbelievable all the different things he's doing in a short span of time where his vocal folds are singing, shutting, opening and then sometimes he's flapping around the distortion tissues so i mean it's just it's totally monstrous and super admirable we should all be very impressed with this so here let's check let's go back and, and listen to some of this again <laughs> Okay, I want to point out to you where it's low fry and where it's false chord because he does change a little bit. So let's listen again. I think those opening ones that kind of had that pig squeal kind of tone to them, I think those were the vocal folds shut. And then I think that the second time that he comes in with the is the vocal folds open and he's getting more of what we call a false chord scream. If you don't know what I mean by that, just go watch the video I made because it really fills in everything. It's the video right before this one. So you can see this is why the range place is saying, you know, it's questionable uh, notes in those extremely high whistle tone octave octaves because his vocal folds are probably aren't actually capable of singing that note. But it's pretty amazing because in a whistle fry we can get it out, but you'll notice that it only happens with the distortion. Typically one dead giveaway that it's a whistle fry and not a voice is that it has distortion on it. When it's clean, it's typically the voice. When it's whistle fry, it's distortion. Although I have to say, I have heard Danny Filth do some whistle fries without necessarily having to make the distortion to go along with it. But again, that would be, that's very exceptional. Let's listen to a little bit more of Kyo. And then I want to go and I want to show you a different screamer afterwards versus a singer doing a whistle note versus a whistle fry. And they're much clearer examples. And then, then you can hear the two differences. We're going to listen to Maria Brink compared with Diana Damrau on some of the exact same notes, but we're talking, going to talk about whistle fry versus a sung pitch. Let's give Kyo some more time because he's so good here. Let's listen to him some more. <laughs> I do want to say there is a lot of articles about him, though, having experienced some vocal injuries. He's actually making all the sounds correctly, but he could just not have super great con control over it or just maybe just wants to fuel it with emotion. And that might have led to a little bit of slamming in his vocal cords or it could just be overuse from touring. He has had nodules and things, which are essentially calluses along the surface, surface of the vocal folds. And those can be caused from using them too much or slamming them too hard. Um, sometimes we actually need to strengthen the internal vocal compression muscles that cause the cords to make contact, the adduction uh, muscles, to make sure that we can actually withstand doing these fry screams and holding the cords together because actually they slam more when they're weaker. If someone has weak vocal strength and they're not compressing fully, they'll kind of like slap together to, to try to make up for that. And that's where we actually see a lot of damage. So if you ever had a little weakness in there for any reason, then that could have caused it too. We don't really know, but just know that 
if you want to do something like this, you'd have to really train each style and be a very careful, technically accurate vocalist so that you wouldn't cause any damage. I wanted to show you a whistle fry where we could actually isolate the pitch. And thanks to YouTubers, we have some. So first I'm going to show you Maria Brink, which you guys all know Maria. She's amazing. One of my favorite screamers. We were both signed to Century Media Records around the same time. So I've been able to watch her come up through the scene over the years. This is going to be a whistle fry note that is coming out of her mouth at B5. Actually, she could probably sing that note because I think she's a, uh, either a really high mezzo or a soprano. However, this is not a sung note. It's going to come out in the middle of the fry scream where we're going to be kind of whistling through the vocal folds. So there's distortion in there and you're going to notice a predominance of other overtones as well not just the b5 you can do distortion with your voice but you can't do the vocal cords being shut of fry scream and sing because it's contradictory movements so um this is this is different this is whistling through the chords <laughs> Okay, now let's listen to what it sounds like. We could hear that was right around here when it started. She kind of slides down with it. And then let's listen to what a, what a sung one where the chords are actually singing the pitch. This is Diana Domro, a very famous coloratura soprano, um, kind of known for singing like the Queen of the Night aria, another whistle repertoire. This is what it sounds like if a woman sings it. It's a little different sounding. So that first long note, that's the one. Let's go back and then we'll listen to the whistle fry again. I want to just, I want you to hear that version again. Let's go to sung again. So I really just want you to hear that. If you want to get the high whistle fry, you need to learn how to fry scream first. Let's listen to a higher pitched whistle tone in the sung range that would have more of a whistly sound. And you'll see that it also still sounds a lot different from the whistle tone in fry scream. And we're gonna listen to an F sharp six here. And then I'll play the whistle fry again, even though there'll be different pitches. You can hear even when the, the voiced pitch gets more whistly, it's not the same as what's happening in whistle fry. We can really d hear the difference there when it goes up. I mean, it's really, really similar. So if you don't have super trained ears, you might be like, I can't hear the difference. But there really is a difference. It's sort of the difference between the way a hawk squeal sounds versus the way a sung note sounds. Listen to them over and over again. The more you learn how to listen for these things, the more you will hear the differences in the stuff that I talk about. Thanks everybody so much for all your subs and thank you so much for all your shares. This has been so great making these videos for you. Everything has been going awesome. Let me know what you want to see next. Don't forget we've got a Facebook group for you to join. I also am on Instagram. I have two accounts. I have voice hacks if you're interested in just following voice things. If you want to follow me more personally as a singer and a vocalist because I am a working musician Musician, in addition to being a vocal coach, it's Metal Mary Z. Feel free to follow me on Instagram. All the links to are also in the description below. Thanks, everybody. I'm out. See you next